Take a deep breath. I don't know what to say when I look in your eyes. You made the world before. them out and say You may be seated. Bah, humbug. <laughs> One of my favorite stories of Christmas is the story about Ebenezer Scrooge who was bitter toward Christmas, and then he had that fateful event in the middle of the night where he saw his past, saw the present, saw the future, 
and the next morning had a change of heart, and you know the story. So I thought I'd try to resemble Ebenezer Scrooge for a few moments tonight, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But, you know, um, it's been a tough year in a lot of ways for a lot of people. And the joy comes from knowing the Lord. But I don't know if it's just you or me, uh, or if it's me, um, but every year I get a little bit nostalgic at Christmas. And this year, I have been more nostalgic think about Christmas than I have in most years. I, have, I don't know why. As we're driving up uh, well, it goes back to even when, like when I was a kid and When I was a kid and wanting to uh, get up early in the morning and get a head start on the day, on Christmas Day. And so I would sneak up out of my bed and go out to the tree. And the place where we, place where we lived had a, had a, we were on a corner and it had a street light. And there was a bay window and, and at one angle. And the street light wouldn't come directly in it, but it would shine somewhat into the window. And enough that I could see what was under the Christmas tree. And see what the big guy had brought for me and my brothers. And I'd see what was there, and then I'd, you know, tiptoe back to bed. And then in the morning when everybody got up and we saw it, I acted surprised. Did you ever have those? Did you ever do anything like that? You know? I don't know if it's about being a compliant firstborn or just sneaky. I don't I don't know what. Have you ever had experiences like that where you just, you, you on Christmas Eve, you, you can't go to sleep. You're just so wound up about what's going to happen the next day. I'm talking about when we're kids. You know, if you're an adult, you've got, you got other problems if that's you. But <laughs> it's okay to be excited about it. So, um, yeah, and things like that. And I think of think of uh, my grandma and my grandma did Christmas really well. She decorated her house. Uh, she put, people aren't here anymore. But that doesn't mean that there isn't joy in, in the present. It, and I don't, I don't want us to to be so remorseful about what was that we cease to be joyful about what is. Because God's blessings are new and fresh with each new morning. And God has blessed you. He's blessed you. You have much to be thankful for as you celebrate Christmas this year. And some of you, you had damage to your homes, and you had damage to your automobiles, and you've had financial hardship, or some of you had health, but guess what? Take your pulse. You're still here. That's something to be thankful for. And the ones around you are still around you. 
And that's something to be thankful for. And so I really want to encourage you to stop for a moment before or you eat or open presents or anything else and just take it all in. Thank God for the blessings that you have right now because, you've, because we have been blessed by God. The past was great and there are things about it we miss. And I'm as guilty as anybody else but we do not want to let what could have been or what we think should have been drown out the joy of what is. Because God has ways of blessing us. But, you know, Ebenezer Scrooge not only saw Christmas past and he saw Christmas present, but he saw Christmas future, and he didn't like what he saw, and so he made a fundamental change in his life. And I want to take off on that for we see, because I'm thankful not only for what was and what is, but I'm thankful for what will be Christmas future. And if you're a Christian, you have re you really have something to celebrate, because as good as that was, as good as this is, it doesn't compare with the good which that will be. There's a passage in First Thessalonians I'd like to call your attention to. It's a familiar passage, for the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so We will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The Lord is returning. And when the Lord returns, we're going to have a reunion like no other. And the people that are no longer with us now will be with us then. And the people, if they're in the Lord, the people who have died and gone on, who we miss in the here and now, yet on the, on the day when Jesus return, returns, we will have a grand, grand reunion. It's going to be beyond anything I can describe. All the good, all, all the goodness rolled up, up and, and packaged in one great big ceremony of reunion with the Lord. And That's why he says, therefore, encourage one another with these, these words. And all that is possible because Jesus came the first time. Because he came as a child to live our life and to die our death, that he might call us into a new existence. He came to open a door 
for us to